when they come to the panyard, they come to a different place. They come to safety. They come to community. They come to the vibe. Happy carnival. We started with a carnival. We started with a vibe here. And I just want to wish everybody to have a safe carnival. A safe carnival. You know, remember that your, your, your temples of the Holy Spirit. And we, tonight, tonight or today, we're going to talk about Pan Yard Vibes. Here we're going. Pan Yard Vibes. Sacred Spaces. That is the conversation we're coming out with. So hold on. Before he tells you, buckle up. And I want everybody to just get into where we're going, where His Grace is having a conversation with us on Panyard Vibes, Sacred Spaces. And here it is. He, he has his eyes on you. He's been walking the Panyards. But let's welcome our Archbishop. Welcome Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon. How are you, sir? Deacon Derek, I am doing great, you know. I did real, real good. You know, so often we Trinidadians lament this country. So often we, we see all the negative, we see all that wrong, we see all the challenges, the way we can't move forward, the way we can't see what we're supposed to see. We 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 lament this country so often, huh? And Recently, I had an experience, boy, that I will tell you, it lift me to a higher height. <laughs> after last week, and I didn't think I could get higher than last week, eh? uh -huh. but after last week, when we, we wrote on, on, when I wrote on the, um, the Panyard, and we had that wonderful expose on carnival generally, and the asset, aspects of carnival, and if carnival had a morality of its own. I went on a panyard crawl. Mm -hmm. You ever went on a panyard crawl, boy? I'm telling you, I went on a panyard. Plenty panyard crawl. Men, men coming from a, all over the world to go on a panyard crawl with me. A 15-seater maxi taxi. Yes. <laughs> Let's just say it was it was appropriately stocked. <laughs> not, for, not for somebody like me. You know, food somebody's called me a taste so. of waste. No food for so. <laughs> food for so. All right, all right. And well, appropriate um, lubricants for the food to, to be digested. It is carnival after all. Yeah. But, you know, we went on several, to several panyards and it, this, this thing just grew inside of me, this, this sense of, of, you know this the the, the the specialness of the space that we were entering that night, and I suppose one made it even even more brilliant. So it's it's some people were working in the chantry, and then also the seminarians were on their own panyard crawl, and we met up in in two different places in this crowd. But it it really fired my imagination in a way that, you know, the best of Trini was what we encountered and the best of, of, of us is, is what we, what we, what, what I met on that night. You know, this was a really rich cultural experience. And, and, you know, the nice thing you're going to happen here, yeah, they start a conversation and the conversation went all kind of different directions. Yeah. He said, you know, for me, there's a sacred space. Mm -hmm. When he sat up with that, you know, <laughs> I said, boy, it's true. You know, it's a sacred space. What makes it sacred is the, is the, the sacrifice and the discipline that happens in that space every single night for two months without stopping. And and I don't know any other space in Trinidad where you, you get that level of sacrifice, dedication, and, and that level of community and communion performing their tune. And something had come over him that was like a total transformation in this boy's life. He said, that is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about sacred space and this Spaniard. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 
yeah. the yeah. ability to teach complexity to a five-year-old in a way that that five-year-old not only gets it, masters it, and feels completely at home in it in a relatively short time. He said that that is is what what I I I want to to talk about. And so for Colin the Paniard is a sacred space where children are protected. Where children are they come and and they come into a safe space. And not only they come into a safe space, but they are protected from from the whole environment. And they're protected from 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 all the the characters that happens out there. You know, in the pastoral letter, I talk about communion coming from Munio, which is really embankment, that we find ourselves in the same existential embankment. Yeah. Well, well, in Trinidad and Tobago, that is found in the Paniard. You're in the same existential embankment. The embankment like, like in a trench in a wall. Because when you come into the Paniard and you're behind your pan, everybody in that yard, everybody on that team, everybody on that side is in the same existential space where they want one thing, mastery of music and excellence of rendition. And that means everybody is in the same existential space, seeking to become the best they can at whichever pan they're playing, which means that we have a whole set of people, young, old, everybody, yeah. committing themselves to excellence. And, and the sense of communion that people experience, that's what really shook me. And, and rocked me when I looked at it. And so I am saying they have a family who looks out for them. Whatever the community they come from, the family they find in the, in the Panyard really looks out for them. Colin, you know, in the band, the youth, youth come from all kind of places. Yeah. All kind of places. And these same youth are outstanding in their discipline, outstanding in their in their rendition, outstanding in musical ability, outstanding in the sense of community, outstanding in teaching one another the, the, the tune when one feeling another one teaching, outstanding in making sure everybody has the same high standard. They come, they come from a rough community. But they are outstanding in so many ways. And that I think we as Trinidad and Tobago has to, have to start looking at and meditating upon because there's something there that I don't know we have quite understood. Transformation. Transformation. You see, the social transformation of the steel band is one of those areas of national life that we have not pondered deeply enough. Yeah. You know, every time we start to talk about models of development, we look at Singapore, we look at this one, we look at that one, we look at Britain, we look at America, we look here, we look there. But there is a model of social transformation that is in front of our eyes that, that we have to ponder deeply. For two generations, Pan men went from being a social stigma to the pride of a grandmother. How is that possible? How is that possible? From bajonism to musical experts. From, from them riffraff to, oh, my granddaughter beats for a steel band. <laughs> How is that possible? How is that possible? And, and it, it is not just possible. It has actually taken place right here in sweet Trinidad and Tobago. And we have to see with these eyes of ours what has happened before our very eyes in this beloved nation of ours. And if it could happen there, it could happen elsewhere.